Welcome to our digital worship for Sunday, November 20th. This is the, the end of the church year cycle as we prepare for a new one that begins with the season of Advent next week. But as we gather together on this Christ the King Sunday, we, uh, we begin with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, Come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, our true life, our, O God, our true life to serve you is freedom, and to know you is unending joy. We worship you, we glorify you, 
We give, you th- we give thanks to you for your great glory. Abide with us, reign in us, and make this world into a fit habitation for your divine majesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them. And I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. And he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on earth. He makes war to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Our second reading is from Colossians, the first chapter. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 23rd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there, with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, 
Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we lay our lives at your feet and we want to follow you. Help us to learn your way, to follow your path, to seek those whose lives reflect yours. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I was a child of the 70s and 80s. And when I was five, six years old was when the first Star Wars movie came out. 
And I can't count the number of times I went back to go see that movie. And, you know, growing up, I wanted to be Luke Skywalker. I had the lightsaber. I had all the, the little figures of the X-Wings and things like that. And that, that was what I wanted to do. I mean, it was, it was its own myth that I lived in. You know, it was a story that was very powerful and very real as I was growing up. And one of the things about this, uh, this space opera, as uh, George Lucas, the creator, liked to call it, was it was very clear what was good and what was evil. And you could tell not only by the way in which they acted, but also by the, the very outfits that they wore. So, you know, you have the Darth Vader who's dressed all in black and has a face like a skull, and then you have all the stormtroopers who are dressed in, in armor that looks like a skeleton. It became very clear from the very first time you saw visually, these are the bad guys. And then by, by easy figuring out, oh, this is who the good guys are. And the bad guys really acted bad. And the good guys, you know, it's not that there weren't scoundrels among them, but they, they acted, they did the right things for the right reasons. And I know that life isn't so simple, but one of the things that's been, I want to say, interesting that I've observed over the last, um, you know, 10, 15 years of my life is a reshuffling of that, that Star Wars myth. And, and what I mean by that is that there are a whole group of people who've really become entranced, for lack of a better word, with the bad guys. Now, I know that they had some cool characters, and that's one of the things about, about villains is often they have cooler lines. They often do things that are more interesting sometimes than your very two-dimensional uh, protagonists in a story. But it's not so much the embracing of the characters, it's the embracing of the ethos of, of power and security. And, and this is not new to our age. This is something that you see time after time again in history. You know, the Jewish people struggled with it as kings began to act less like the king was supposed to act as a, a representative of God and as one who, you know, felt like they had divine authority to do whatever they wanted to do. And I think one of the great dangers is when we try to make God justify whatever we want to do. And I think one of the things about the Lutheran faith being a, a faith that takes scripture very, very seriously, and a, a, a faith that says, you know, where do we come to know about God? Where do we come to know who God is? Well, for us, it's very simple. We come to know who God is in coming to know who Christ is. And if something is a betrayal of God and it does not represent this, this fundamental nature of the story that we come to know God through, the story we come to know through the Gospels of, of who Jesus is, how God comes to be down and be a part of us, if it doesn't come to us to know, if it doesn't represent the God who we come to know in the Jesus who we're going to celebrate shortly, and coming to us in the cradle in the manger. The Jesus who his life leads him to the cross. And the Jesus who the only crown that he wears on earth is a crown of thorns. That's the kind of kingdom that Jesus points to. And it's very, very different. And so I've always been a little, I've always been a little leery of politicians. I just... And I've always been a little leery of those who, who think they, they understand God 
because God looks an awful lot like what they want to do. You know, anytime we start to take the way of, hey, what will it do for me to gain power? That's not the way of the God we come to know in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's not the king who we come to know in Jesus. And I do think, again, it's so easy to want to make Jesus like that like that monarch, that tyrant, that, that person who is that strong ruler. And yet so often, what we as humans look at as strong, God looks upon as weak. And I think one of the major reasons for that is, you know, people who we often look upon as strong are those who look after themselves. Those who accumulate for themselves, whether it's power or wealth or privilege or prestige. Those who say to the world, hey, look at me. Again, there's that, for me, that constant reminder of, you know, part of the, uh, the thing I've learned from my tradition is a definition of sin is that which curves us in on ourselves. That which says, hey, the world revolves around me. And the world should serve me. That, my brothers and sisters, that's sin. The way of Christ turns us out. You know, the two great commandments. You are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is the path that we see that Christ takes. That is the type of shepherd that he is. That is, you know... We often want to place our hopes and our symbols and our dreams around this, this kind of rising again of a, a King Arthur or a King David type character. You know, this, this warrior king who will lead us forward. And I think it's always been a source of, of both great strength and great confusion for Christians of, well, but, but what do we do with a king like Jesus? Who doesn't do it the way that we would do it. Who forgives his enemies on the cross. Who offers forgiveness. What do we do with a God who comes down to be among us. Who wants to dwell among us rather than be separated from us. Who comes to serve and not to be served. What do we do with that kind of kingdom. A kingdom is not built upon. You know all the things that we would you know, it's not built upon how many armies you have or, you know, how big of a jet you can fly in or whatever that may be. It's not built upon the audience that you can reach. It's built upon the love that you can share, the forgiveness you can give, the grace you can extend, the times when you can forgive or offer the help that somebody needs. You know, to me, my faith calls me back to this story again and again and again. We stand at the hinge of a year and we remember it's not the end of Jesus' story, it's, it's a transition. But it's a central part of that story. There's a reason that we wear crosses. It's that place where, you know, no other faith would take the cross as a, simple, a central symbol of their faith. This, this, this mark of execution, this symbol of execution, this symbol of torture. And the only reason we do is because that's where we come to know what the glove of God is really like. This is the limit God will go to for us. You know, this is why Paul understanding this gospel can say there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The God who would do this for us and who still continues to love us beyond that, nothing will separate us from that God. You know, we, 
we start the story over again in just a few few days, really. You know, yeah, we're going to spend one more week remembering kind of the end of the story before we transition into the, the things that make way for the birth of Jesus. But it starts. It starts with the God who comes down to us in the cradle, in the manger, who comes down in weakness, who approaches us in a place where God can be met, who lives and walks among us. And his message is not one of grasping after power, but one of forgiveness, one of love, one of showing us a different way. The kingdom of God is known by a king who wears a crown of thorns. And the only time when he's proclaimed king of the Jews is when he's on a cross. And so, as we go out into our world, as we try to figure out, well, what is the way of Christ? Remember the cradle, that manger where God comes down to be among us. That's the nature of our God, who comes to be with us. Remember the cross, that place where God's love will not abandon us, even as we abandon it. That place where God's love says nothing will separate from me from you and remember the crown of that kingdom is not the rich crown of gold and rubies and gems but the crown of thorns because we serve one who came not to be served but to serve and our lives look like that too if we are going to follow that God, if we are going to be followers of Christ, our lives will be lives of service. Our lives will be lives of love. And it may not be the way of the rich and the powerful and the wealthy. And I get the draw of the other way. Believe me, I do. I get the draw of, of power. I get the draw of greed. I get the draw of, you know, me being at the center of things. But this is what faith is about. Faith turns us from that which says it's about me and turns me outward to that which is about God and my neighbor. That's what Christ's kingdom is about. That's what Christmas and Good Friday and Easter and all of this year that we celebrate, that's what it's about is so that we remember who we are and whose we are. If we live, we live as people of Christ the Lord. If we die, we die of people as of Christ the Lord. But whether we live or whether we die, as disciples of Christ, this is the way that we live. Thanks be to God. Amen. I ask you to join with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Creating God, source of all life, we rejoice in the incredible creation that you have given us to watch over. As you continue to renew your creation day by day, we ask that you grant both your people and leaders, global and local, a heart to care for the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, ruler of all the earth, where nations and communities yearn for peace and justice, we ask for your steadfast love and righteousness to guide those working for peace. Watch over those who dedicate their lives to the protection and service of others, including Ben, Bryson, Christian, Clayton, Daniel, Dylan, Ethan, Evan, Luke, Michael, Ryan, 
Spencer, Sydney, Tyler B., and Tyler G. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, look on your children with compassion and ease the suffering of those dealing with emotional or physical pain. Have your healing hand upon Aubrey, Avery, Betsy, Billy, Bob, Brenda, Brandon, Campbell, Carlene, Cohen, Dan, Dennis, Denver, Donna, Eliza, Gary, Jamie, Jan, Judy, Lori, Linda, Michaela, Maureen, Mike, Nolan, Roger, Sandy C., Sandy P., Stacy, Tom, and Wayne. As well as those we lift up in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the ministries of the ELCA and the Northern Texas, Northern Louisiana Synod. We also lift up in prayer today New Hope Lutheran Church in Keller, Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Garland, and ELCA World Hunger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now in trust and in hope, we commend to you, O Lord, all for whom we pray. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you as you gather together with friends and family in your home. So this is the part of the uh, service where we would also collect our offering. And so if you are a contributor to Rejoice Lutheran Church, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for making this ministry possible. Thank you for allowing myself and Pastor Adam to do the ministry we do. But beyond that, to do the ministry that this church does.